Alaska, the 50th state of the USA, comprises all the area to the left or west of this heavy line. This episode of Alaska deals with the enclosed area and takes us from Valdez at the eastern side of Prince William Sound, northward to the Denali National Park. Our route from Valdez first follows the Richardson Highway with views of the Chugach Mountains, past Glen Allen where we view a muskox farm and finally to the Denali National Park which contains Mount McKinley, America's highest mountain. Valdez on the eastern side of Prince William Sound, often referred to as the Switzerland of Alaska, is ringed by snow-capped mountains and is Alaska's northernmost ice-free port. The huge Peter Toth wood carvings are a prominent feature of this busy tourist center, where many cruise ships and ferries berth in a harbor with only a 10 to 12 foot rise and fall of tide. Around September, October each year, the salmon that have been at sea for several years make their way back up the rivers to spawn and then die. At many places they can be seen in hundreds, dragging themselves uphill against the current. The king salmon can travel up to 2,000 miles inland and because they can jump as much as 12 feet out of water, they clear most obstacles in their path. In places, the United States Fish and Wildlife Service have constructed ladders to ease the upstream journey of mature salmon. A female can lay as many as 20,000 eggs. After leaving Valdez, the road climbs through the Thompson Pass, first past the scenic Bridal Veil Falls, which appears to be a popular name for many waterfalls. A few miles further on, the horsetail falls cascade down right to the edge of the road. mile post the road approaches the Worthington Glacier where one can walk to the very edge of the ice to view Alaska's most easily accessible glacier. of the Alaska Pipeline, which wends 789 miles across mountain ranges and rivers from Prudhoe Bay on the Arctic Ocean to Valdez, from where the oil is shipped to the southern states. Part is underground, but where the ground is frozen it is raised so as not to melt the permafrost. In places it must be high enough for animals to pass underneath. The pipeline provides 75% of Alaska's tax revenue. As the highway wends its way to Glen Allen, magnificent views of Mounts Sanford, Drum and Wrangell are viewed. Permanently snow-capped peaks of the Chukach Mountains, which rise to a height of over 10,000 feet. Twenty-six and a half miles northeast of Anchorage is a small Indian village. The focal point is possibly the churchyard cemetery, still in use. The colorful houses are called spirit houses. When an orthodox Indian is buried, the family places a new blanket over the grave instead of flowers, and a cross is placed at the foot. On the fortieth day, the family will erect a spirit house over the grave, 
decorating it in the traditional colors unique to each family. The musk ox, or Umingmak, to give it its Eskimo name, is found only in the most northerly parts of Alaska, Canada and Greenland. Its numbers have fallen dramatically, although it is now protected in Canada. Not far out of Anchorage, the musk ox produce cooperative has been formed to breed the animal. The herd supplies kivuot, an exceedingly soft, downy, ash-brown underwool, which grows beneath its long outer hair. This is shed naturally in the spring. Fine kivuot yarn is mailed to Eskimo members of the co-op who work at home in isolated vill villages, served by only two mail planes a week and no roads. Warmth, lightness, and a silky softness are Kivuot's most pleasurable attributes. The colors along the George Park Highway become more intense as we progress north in the direction of Denali, for this is the fall, and the willows and aspens put on their golden robes as a last brave act. Approximately halfway between Anchorage and Fairbanks lies the great Denali National Park, truly an island in time of an unspoiled living tundra environment. But the next day, the scene has changed with dramatic abruptness. For overnight, there's been a heavy snowfall and the dominating color is white. Today, because of road conditions, the only access allowed to the park is by public bus. Halfway through the morning came the toilet stop. Then very soon after, in a snowstorm, the first animal sighted was a moose. And a few minutes later, willow ptarmigans, the state bird of Alaska, a bird whose plumage, speckled brown in summer, turns to snow white in winter. Denali plants live in one of two different habitats, the tiger forest or the tundra. Tiger is a Russian word meaning land of little sticks. The dominant species in the taiga forest are white and black spruce, aspens, and balsam poplar. Grizzly, or brown bears, and black bears inhabit Denali, but the grizzly is the more common and inhabits the tundra, while the black is usually found in forested areas. Like humans, grizzlies are omnivorous. They eat both plants and meat. They prefer the more easily digested protein in meat, but they find it difficult to get much meat in their diet, and so spend 90% of their time foraging for green shoots and berries. Before long on that first morning, the bus slid to a stop. The snow on the road had turned to ice, it was almost impossible to stand, let alone drive a vehicle, and a return to the hotel was made. They say one of the easiest and enjoyable ways to view the Alaska wilderness is by traveling in the Vista Dome car of the Alaska Railroad. This train carries passengers and freight between Anchorage and Fairbanks, an all-day trip that stops roughly midway at Denali Park, bringing visitors to the region. Sled dogs are used by the park rangers to provide effective winter transportation. There are few purebred dogs used. They are a mixture of Greenland Eskimo, Siberian Husky and Alaskan Malamute. They must be friendly and of good disposition and be enthusiastic about working in harness. This was very evident in the demonstration which we observed. Other characteristics sought after are good feet, a dark nose to lessen the wrist of extreme sunburn and medium size for a balance between strength and speed.
nests are usually found in transition areas where willow bushes intermingle with spruce. They like to feed in the low bushy areas but prefer to bed in the cover of the spruce forest. At first glance, moose appear to be awkward, ungainly and even ugly animals. Yet the more you see them in their natural condition, you come to think of them as stately and majestic. Like the grizzly, they are a wild animal and are treated with the utmost respect. The moose is Denali National Park's largest resident. Adult bulls can weigh up to 1,500 pounds and cows up to 1,200 pounds. sheep related to the bighorn sheep of the lower states but they differ in two respects one they are white and two the ram's horns are much narrower in diameter Denali National Park is one of the greatest wildlife viewing areas in the world even if you're in the park for only a single day you are virtually guaranteed seeing grizzly bears moose caribou and dull sheep with luck you may even see a wolf which we did, but the cameraman could not shoot quickly enough. There is something about a grizzly that fires our imagination. People cannot help but look upon them with a mixture of awe, fear and respect, perhaps even kinship. There are between 200 and 300 grizzlies in Denali, a population which is believed to have been stable for some time. But this is not a zoo. Denali's grizzlies are not zoo bears. They will not do tricks for cookies. Their integrity and character have not been compromised by contact with humans. These bears, along with the park's other wildlife, are freely living out their lives in their natural homes. Seeing these animals in their native land is what makes visiting Denali such a special and intense experience. Denali National Park Hotel, situated just inside the entrance to the park, the rangers deliver many talks and slideshows on the flora, fauna and natural history of the area, and guided walks in the surrounding forest are a feature of their services. While the squirrels put on their act to add to the entertainment. Six miles into the park is the Isleson Visitor Center, which we found, unfortunately, was closed for the winter, but the views and the spellbinding awe of the snow-clad tundra remained intact. The time is early September, and the Denali tundra has entered its full foliage season. The radiant tundra colors contrasting with the frosty white snow on the Alaska Range make fall Denali's most elegant season. From the humblest tundra flower to the mightiest grizzly bear, this land supports a vast array of life. Denali National Park was established to preserve a complete tundra ecosystem in its original pristine condition. 
the plants, predators and prey now interacting in the part are the same species that lived in the area thousands of years ago. Regardless of what happens to the rest of the far north, Denali remains an island of time, an unspoiled living tundra environment. Mount McKinley, 20,320 feet above sea level, is without doubt the most impressive feature of Denali. It is the highest mountain in North America, and perhaps could be termed the highest mountain in the world. It rises a sheer 18,000 feet from the surrounding plain, whereas Mount Everest only rises 6,000 feet. Denali, meaning the Great One, is a fitting name for a mystical mountain which so dominates the surrounding land. Visible for only about 25% of the year, we were lucky to find Mount McKinley, to give it its official name, without its shroud of cloud, but by early afternoon it was again covering its head. The last 20 miles of the park road passes through country of extreme loneliness. The road is narrow and for great part of the way clings to precipitous cliffs. Finally we reach Wonder Lake, 85 miles from the park entrance and where the road ends and where McKinley, satisfied with his appearance, finally covers his head once more. For how long? Who can say?